morning everyone it's good to see you so I'm gonna get right into it let's just open with prayer and say thank you Lord that you are here with us we thank you that you will perfect holiness in us that you will work mightily in us Lord that you will show us and guide us and lead us into deeper things of your word Thank you for your presence, for your anointing. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that reveals all truth to us. And thank you that you are here with us in this moment and that you will guide us. Amen. So we are on, <clears throat> on the topic of holiness. So this morning I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the difference between righteousness and holiness. So holiness, we've seen as the, the essence of holiness is ownership by God. I came across the the um, teaching in Luke 1818 or well, not the teaching it's when the rich man came to Jesus and he asked him how does he get how does he get eternal life and Jesus asked him do you know the law um, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength Love your parents, do not murder, do not steal. You know, the whole story, I can, I can read it for you, but if you just want to go follow up, it's Luke 18, 18, about the rich man. But in that, what I realized is God gave him the law, and then this man said, I've done this since I was a young boy. And then God said, okay, but now go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And come follow me. And the rich man was very sad as he walked away because he was very rich. So I looked at that and I realized this, this is the difference between righteousness and holiness. Righteousness is, is what we do. It's reformation. It's Jesus is our righteousness. We see in um, 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, God made whom, him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So there, we know that Jesus is our righteousness. But there is also, a, 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 a part of righteousness is, there's a right relationship to everything in our lives. To every person, there's a different one. In, I wrote it here. In 1 Philippians 1 verse 11, it says, Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So there is a fruit. A fruit has got a seed. And that seed is Jesus. And a fruit makes plant and it gets grown, it grows. So there's fruit. So the, you bear fruit in your relationships to everything, in your relationships to nature, into your relationships with your parents. is different from your relationship with your friend. It's different from your relationship to your children. So there is a righteous relationship that you live to everything. Righteousness is a reformation. It's what we do. We holiness is a transformation. It's what God does. So if we look at the story about the rich man, now there is there is a lot of good good people in the world. But God didn't call us to be good people, He called us to be holy people. Even unbelievers can be good people. They not they might be very big on telling the truth. They live a right life with their kids. They look out for their families. 
They give to the poor. They do everything right, but they don't believe in God. They have no relationship with God. They will not see the kingdom of heaven, even though they are good people. So we must understand it. To be good and to do the right things does not give us a relationship with God. It does not make us kingdom people. It does not make us disciples. It does not give us eternal life. The kingdom is for now. Jesus said when he was questions, questioned about where the kingdom is, he says, you will not see it. He will say, here it is or there it is. For the kingdom of God is in you. Holiness is an outworking from the presence of God. You are, holiness comes from, from spending time in the presence of God. He makes you holy. Like Moses, after he spent time of God on the mountain, and he came down, his face shone. He didn't know it was shining. But it was being in the presence. It was being in the presence of the king. When we look at Psalm 23, verse 3, it says, He refreshes and restores my soul. And he leads me on paths of righteousness for his name's sake. On paths of righteousness. He leads us, which means we we follow it and we we see how to do is our example. And you have, there is you have to have righteousness to get to into having holiness. But righteousness on its own is not good enough. Being a good person is not good enough. Holiness is essential. It's, it's where the promises is. It's where our life of God begins. We look at Psalm 29 verse 2. It says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty and majesty of His holiness as the creator and source of holiness. So where do we find holiness? In God. We find it in God. And you'll see it says, Worship the Lord in the beauty and majesty of holiness. Remember earlier I said, your, how you live your life, your, your life is a worship to God. And he says, worship the Lord in the beauty and majesty of his holiness. So you being holy is a worship to the Lord. Then Psalm 96.9 says, worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble in submissive wonder before him all the earth. Once again, worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Holiness is just all over this book. Holiness is transformation. So we are, we, while we are looking at things here, and a lot of it that we go through is things we do on our own. Like I said, we, we, we start looking at what we're looking at. We start thinking about what we're thinking about. That is, that is how we start this journey. It's almost a journey that starts with righteousness. But holiness goes a step further. But righteousness is the start unto holiness. Because it's Christ in us that is our righteousness. And he shows us, he says, he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Like I said in previous sessions, it's, it's how we present ourselves to the world, how we are representing the kingdom. If we want to tell people about Jesus, we have to represent Jesus. So how we conduct ourselves matters. 
And that gets us into a closer relationship with God. Because we honor Him with our actions. We honor Him with how we treat people. We honor Him with how we love one another. We honor Him with how we forgive one another. So there's a, there's, in this story about the rich man, there is a heart there. And that's that change in the heart. You see, I've done everything that the law requires. And then God said, go and sell everything you got. Understand that I am your source. I need you to understand that everything you get, you get through me. And that if you seek me first and my righteousness, I will give all these things to you. It is submitting. It is surrender. That is what it's about. It's not really about money and it is at in school so much Uh, nonsense in our community of believers where being rich is frowned upon but we still need finances to to operate in this on the earth but we almost become fearful because Jesus said that it will be easier for a for a camel to get through the eye of, the, of a needle than for a rich man to see the kingdom. But that's not what it's about. It's not truly about riches. It's because money in our lives has become our God, has become our supply, has become our status. Money has become what makes us great or not great. That is why it's frowned upon. But money in itself is not evil. It's a resource to be used for the kingdom. It's a resource to take care of the needy and the poor. It's a resource to bring people into the kingdom. To spread the gospel. It's not evil on its own. It's the heart behind it. So when Jesus says, go sell all you have and come follow me. Come follow me. I'm, I'm the vine. You are the branches. Our holiness comes from being connected to Jesus. It's a connection. It's your life. I've said before, it's you surrender your life. Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. Follow me. Go sell everything you have and follow me. That's how you get into the kingdom. That's how you get into eternal life. And yes, there is a place where it says you will be judged according to your deeds. And then you see you can't do anything. You know, it's, it's controversy there. But our deeds is righteous living. It's representation of the kingdom. The step further we take into holiness it's like I said, it's when it's okay for everybody else, but it's not okay for you. It is taking that step further. It is looking at the character of Jesus. When he was here on the earth and he gave us an example of how to live. How to live a life of compassion. You can't lay hands on someone for healing if you don't have compassion for them. If you're already judging them 
for the fact that they are sick or the situation that they're in. You can do nothing for them. It comes from a heart of compassion. It comes from God's heart. It comes from being connected to the vine. The Bible is full of bearing fruit. Fruits are grown. Holiness is a journey. Righteousness is a journey. This is serious business. And it's a worthwhile journey. Pursue holiness. For yourself, go look for every scripture that talks about holiness. Get it in you. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the essence of holiness to you. Spend time with God. He makes you holy. That is your part that you're doing. It's you are making the time to spend with Him. The rest, the transformation happens from God in you. It's being in His glory, in His presence. But you have to make time to be there. And even though Jesus is our righteousness, we still have to follow. He gives us the right and wrong, it's in us. We still have to follow it. That's our part. This is not a free ride where we sit back and we just know, we confess things and we just say, God will provide for me. So therefore I'd have to do nothing. But it's not like that. He is our provision, but His provision is in Him. Healing is in Him. Eternal life is in Him. Outside of him, it's your works. Once you enter into him, once you're in his kingdom, then he is your provider, and he is your healer, and he is your righteousness, and he is your strength, and he is the God who sees you. But we have to enter in to the kingdom, enter into holiness, understand that when the Bible says, this is what I want you to do, go out, make disciples, lay hands on the sick, raise the dead, preach the kingdom. It's for now. So this is why I'm on this journey. And why I know that there is more to it. And if I don't see things like this in my life, then I know there is something still that is blocking me. Chase after it. Let's start getting testimonies of healings. of being delivered, of being an overcomer. You know, in Revelations of the seven churches, there is an acknowledgement of what you've done. And then God will say, but I hold this against you. And then he says, but to him that overcomes, there's a gift to overcome things in your life there's something, there's a reward for it. Let's be overcomers. Let's overcome this world. Let's start looking like kingdom people. Like children of God, the creator of everything. Let's start looking like we got Christ inside of us. That is now living through us. 
Let's look like people that has died to our own emotions, to our own feelings, to our own ways and wants and needs. And let's look like people that is here for what God wants. Fight for this. You will be set free. It says here in Psalm 23, it says, He refreshes and restores my soul and He leads me on paths of righteousness. If you feel broken, this is where you get your restoration. He restores your soul and He leads you on paths of righteousness. And it says, yeah, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That is his righteousness. That is his goodness as being in him. It's understanding. You can only live a fearless life when you understand that you've got the backing of the kingdom. That you, God is your provider. You do not have to fear or worry about what you will eat and drink and what you will wear. That's when you're there. That's when you're in it. No fear. Fear is an opposition to faith. Fear is faith compromised. Fear is from the kingdom of darkness. Faith is from the kingdom of light. So if we're spending half our time and our life in fear, we must know that we are living in the wrong kingdom. But we have the Bible and we have the Holy Spirit and we've got God. Do not try to do things in your own strength. In my journey, and I'm sure in most of you, there's been a time where you've made a New Year's revelation. I want to lose this much weight. Or I want to quit smoking this year. Or I just want to be a better person. And we, we start with that year in our own strength. And we never accomplish it. Next year it's the same thing. Before the end of the first month, we've already failed and given up. Some of this is us a strong world and we get a little bit further. But eventually those things creep back into our lives. We pick up the weight we lost. We have a cigarette again. It is only when we acknowledge that without you, God, we are nothing. And we can't do anything. We say, help me. You sent me your Holy Spirit as my helper. Help me, Lord, to overcome this. Because I cannot do it on my own. Remo help me remove this thing out of my life that I know hurts you. Please. And I tell you, God is faithful. And you will succeed. You will succeed with God. It's only when we do things in our own strength that we fail. With God, there is victory. Only with God. He is our strength. He is our strong tower. He is our deliverer. He is our provider. That's why I say that thanksgiving is one of your almost strongest emotions because if you are always thankful for who God is and what He's done, and you're thankful for everything that people do for you. And you're thankful for the person next to you who is made in the image of God, which is image bearer. Then everything changes. Because you're thankful. Because you know that in your own strength you've got nothing. It's only through God that you're a conqueror. And it's only from God that holiness can 
develop inside of you. That's why God said, come have your rest in me. Give up this struggle. Give up trying to do everything on your own strength. Come, have your rest in me. Because I will give you rest. Find your rest. How wonderful it will be to be fearless. To be like a child. Because the kingdom is for these little ones. We have to become like children. And completely with our whole being, depend on our Father. Let's be like children. Let's trust God. That's me for today. We thank you, Lord, for your message. Thank you for every heart, every person, that hears this message, Lord. May you open their eyes and their ears and their hearts for this seed. May you water it, Lord, cover it with your love. And may your holiness spring forth. May the realization May the understanding and the wisdom cover the seed and make it grow into a strong branch and start bearing fruits in their lives. Thank you for your healing in our lives and in our hearts. Thank you for restoring our souls. Thank you for strengthening us. Help us depend only on you God and to stop doing things in our own strength we surrender our lives to you in this moment and we say come Lord have your way with me have your way with us we worship you and we honor your holy name In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Be blessed. Be encouraged. And remember you're not alone. The Lord is your strength. And nothing in this world is too big for the Lord to handle. Pursue holiness with all of your being. And make time. Make time for the Lord. Be blessed.